Hey everybody! Today's adventure is going to be a study in frustration and perseverance. Or maybe just concrete proof that I am officially insane. So I'm going to show you what I've been up to trying to learn a new tool for Blender called Grolf's Animation Chain. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about, here it is in a nutshell. So I love to mess around with armor and clothing for Skyrim. And the 3D meshes that make up the armor and the clothing require you to use a 3D software package like Blender to mess around with them. Now I've been using Blender for a couple of years in a very limited fashion, I have to admit, because I'm totally self-taught and I really have no idea what I'm doing. But a couple of months ago, I discovered a new tool that I thought would be really useful for my Blender work. It's called Grolf's Test 5 Blender Animation Chain. And the reason this caught my eye is because it allows you to test the movement of the mesh within Blender using Skyrim-based character animations instead of having to constantly import and export the mesh back and forth to the game for testing. So you can hopefully see right away why this had uh, appeal to me as a time saver, a hassle reducer, and probably, or at least I thought, a way to produce even higher quality meshes with less clipping and less weighting issues uh, in the game. But here is the problem. Novices, like me, those of us who know just enough to get ourselves in a whole lot of trouble, but then have very little idea of how to get back out of it. So uh, Grolf's awesome tool comes with some instructions, limited instructions. It's probably everything and more than an expert would need, but it's not nearly enough for someone like me. Someone who is already following a step-by-step how-to guide to get even the most basic blender tasks done. Now one good thing was I did manage to find a conversion of Grolf's original animation chain tool from the CBBE female body type that he used to the UNP female body type, which is great because UNP is the body that I use in my game. And I didn't want to have to try to convert Grolf's original file over to that body type. The UNP version of the Blender animation chain was very kindly created and provided by Urshi. And Urshi did provide some instructions, a bit more than Grolf did, but still not enough for a real novice. So I've spent a lot, I mean a lot, stupid crazy amount of time struggling with this tool and trying to get it to work for me. Now I haven't given up on it because I really think these are awesome tools provided by these awesome modders and I think they will make my life easier once I get past the steep learning curve. And so that begins the adventure for today. What I wanted to do was convert some clothing meshes I had recently found for a body, female body type called Demonica over to the UNP female body so that I could use them in my game. Well, rather than just do it the old way that I already knew using plain old non-animated Blender, I decided I'd jump in with both feet and try to use a new animation chain blender file because it would, uh, it would make my life easier. <laughs> well, that's what I'd hoped. But as often happens in life, things didn't work out the way I had planned. So using Urshi's UNP version of the Blender animation chain file, my first attempt to modify a piece and export it to Skyrim resulted in this. Now in order to fix this, I tried all kinds of things. I can't even remember what all I tried, uh, but nothing worked. And it finally dawned on me that I was maybe having a problem with the skeleton that's included in the animation file. So what I decided to do was just delete the included skeleton. Once I had the mesh uh, for the clothing all finished up and, and looking nice, uh, I deleted the included skeleton and just imported a fresh new one. But when I imported the fresh skeleton from the official UNP body mesh, then I ended up with this. Now, 
This actually was a step forward because at least the body shape looked right, but obviously it wasn't in the right position. Now, it turns out that for whatever reason, known only to him, I suppose, the original UNP body mesh created by Diamond 99 is not centered in the same place as the vanilla body. Now, Urshi actually notes this in the README, and Urshi repositioned the body in the Blender animation file so that it lines up with the vanilla body as well as with the vanilla head, hands, and feet, which is great, actually because not having the UNP body line up did actually drive me a bit nuts whenever I worked on it. Even though it actually would turn out okay in the game for reasons I'm not going to get into. But anyway, the point here is that the UNP body sits here in this position and the vanilla body sits in this position. And the body in Urshi's animation chain file sits in this position. Now the problem is that you can't mix and match the skeletons between all of these bodies because the skeleton has to be in exactly the same position as the body that you're using it for. Or else you're going to get weird things like what I saw in the game. So even though the bodies, the UNP, original UNP body and the UNP body in Urshi's file are exactly the same shape, I can't mix and match their skeletons because they're not lined up in the same spot. So to fix that, I decided to use the vanilla skeleton because Urshi does say in the README, and it's clear if you look at the positioning, that uh, Urshi's body is lined up with the vanilla body, even though the shape's a little different, but the skeletons line up. So what I did was to import the skeleton from the vanilla female body mesh and I parented everything in the mesh to that. And after exporting it and putting it into the game, I ended up with this, which was success. Or so I thought. It was sort of success. It worked for the smallest body size, which is the zero file. And it worked for the largest body size, which is the one file. But the weight slider wasn't working, as you can see here. Now, in case you aren't familiar with how the weight slider works for Skyrim, there is basically two mesh files for every outfit in the game. There's a mesh file for the smallest body size, which is size 0, and a mesh file for the largest body size, which is size 1. And for any weight that you set in between those two, the game just slides the vertices that make up those two meshes to a proportionately in-between position. Now, I've actually seen this crazy mesh weight slider issue before, and I know it can be caused by having a different number of vertices in the zero file versus the one file. It also seems to happen if the vertices are in very different places between the two files, which can be the result of mucking around a lot with the body mesh that sits underneath the outfit mesh. But in this case, I knew that I hadn't added or deleted any vertices and I hadn't done anything crazy to the body. So what the heck was going on? Now, I'd noticed throughout all my attempts that every mesh I exported ended up with duplicate dismemberment partitions for the body. You can see that here in the NIF file. The NIF file is the mesh file that the game uses. You can see here where the BP torso partition shows up twice for this particular body nitri shape. Now the dismemberment partition essentially tells the game which part of the body the mesh belongs to. So for example, the body part torso is for everything you wear on the body. And you can only wear one piece at a time on each body part which is why you can't layer armor on top of clothing and things like that. Now for these duplicate body part partitions that I was getting, I couldn't just delete one of them or else I'd get something that looked like this. But that actually told me something important. So it looked like Blender was assigning some parts of my body mesh to one set of BP torso vertices 
and other parts to a different set of BP torso vertices. You can actually see that here where I activated either one set or the other in the mesh. Now, at first the solution seemed obvious. I just needed to make Blender assign all the body vertices to the same BP torso partition. So there would be only one instead of dividing them across two or sometimes more partitions. But in practice, I have to say it proved impossible. No matter what I did, I could not get the body to export with one partition. It was always two and sometimes three dismemberment partitions all assigned to BP torso. Ah! <laughs> Why? So I turned to my good friend Google for some advice and a quick search provided some really helpful information which suggested it could be caused by a limitation on the number of bones that Blender could associate with any given partition. Now, in order for Blender and NIFScope to play nicely together, um, there's a set of tools that's created called NIF tools. It's a bunch of scripts that you can associate with Blender in order to make these two different pieces of software work together. The NIF tools scripts that Blender is using has set 18 as the maximum number of bones per partition, at least for the version of Blender that I am still using, which is 2.49. Yes, I know it's an old version of Blender. Yes, I know maybe the newest version is better, but I haven't read anything yet that convinces me that the new version is going to fix all the problems and things work fine or until now have worked fine for me using the old version of Blender uh, and so I hadn't made that change yet. Anyway, with all that aside, the, uh, the scripts, even the most updated scripts that are available, still have the maximum number of bones set as 18 per partition. So if the mesh has more than 18 bones attached, then the Blender, what Blender would do is shuffle off the others to a separate partition. And I guess if you had uh, more than 36 bones, you would end up with a third partition. Now, I don't know whether this was randomly done every time you exported or if it was done in a more consistent way. Uh, what I worry though, is that it would be at least somewhat random, which would cause real problems because unless it shuffled exactly the same bones and vertices to exactly the same partitions in the zero file as in the one file, then I could easily see how the weight slider would be all wonked up. All right, so with that understanding, once again, the solution seemed obvious. I just needed to change the maximum number of bones in the script, just like the smart people on these pages said to do. Well, now the problem was I couldn't find the doggone script file to save my life. I looked everywhere and I ended up re-downloading the NIF tools scripts for Blender 2.49 three times before I finally figured it out. And yes, you can blame the old lady's poor computing skills for this, um, but basically my NIF tools scripts were not in the program files as suggested, and not anywhere that would seem to make sense, but it was in some roaming location that I couldn't even find in Windows Explorer. So. Finally, I was able to search it up, and here's where it was. Now, uh, opening up the script file with Notepad, which was oddly another challenge to actually find, I made the suggested changes, and sure enough, in Blender, I could now set the maximum number of bones above 18, which meant that all the vertices were exporting into a single BP torso partition. Yay! Problem solved! Again, <laughs> so I thought. <laughs> so, so here's the problem. Uh, clearly, something is still off with the vertices of the body. Now the clothing actually looks fine where it is, but the body is clearly not right. So the number of vertices are the same in the NIF files 6,622 in the zero file and there's 6,622 in the one file and there's just one partition now 
uh, for each of those, appropriately labeled BP torso and change to body slot 32 for putting it back into the game. But somehow the vertices are just not being treated the same in the zero file and the one file. And so it gets all weird when you try to wait slide between the two. So I think what's maybe happening here is the vertices are perhaps weight painted to the bones differently uh, or somehow they are assigned to the dismemberment partition differently for these two files when I went through the process. And the reason I'm thinking this is, well, number one, I have no idea at this point what else it could be. And number two, I think I may have actually done it a little differently when I made the zero file versus the one file. Uh, and shame on me for that if that's the case. But um, the problem is that I've checked and even though they appear fine, uh, both in Blender and when they're exported into the, into the, the NIF file, uh, they look just fine. Uh, so there may be something that's going on behind the scenes that I just can't see. So I think that's what I'm going to try next. Um, just totally redoing the weight painting and redoing all of the partition assignments from scratch for both of the body sizes. And now that I've got the max bones changed, I may actually try using the skeleton that was included in the file again and just see what happens. Uh, and I'm hoping one of these ideas is going to work out because uh, if not, I really have no idea what to try next. So uh, that's the end of this part of the adventure. Uh, feels a bit like I've been chasing my tail around in circles here, but I hope you enjoyed hearing about my crazy adventure. And maybe in the near future, I'll be able to show you how I got to the end successfully. So I'll see you next time.